Welcome to Autopolitan 1. The stands are packed, the garages are full, and the events are about to begin. So without further ado, let's go down to the pits and meet our competitors. From South Korea, the Berry. From Japan, the Ember. From Australia, the Wallaby. From Italy, the Fettuccini. From Germany, the SLFA. From the United States, the Diplomat, the Mayan, and the fan favorite, the Pilgrim. And from the UK, the McLaren. And a late arrival from the Soviet Union, the Common Turismo. Let's head over now to the site of the first event where the cars are preparing to compete. Event 1 is a 0 to 60 stop test. Cars will be granted up to 10 points in order of their standing at the end of this event. Alright, so first up for this challenge is the Pilgrim. I am expecting very good numbers from this guy right here. The question is, will this be an early victory for the Pilgrim? Or, or will he lose yet again to the McLaren? Stopwatch ready? And 3, 2, 1... Go! And 60. 9.25 seconds is the unofficial time. That is not a bad time at all. As you can see, it barely even got any distance away from the start line. That is going to be a hard time to beat. And who better to follow up the Pilgrim than the Barry? I don't think there's anyone out there expecting a fantastic time from the Barry but it's definitely going to be the main competition to the Common Turismo. Stopwatch ready? 3, 2, 1, go! Definitely not an intimidation to the Pilgrim at all. Substantially further down the road before we're even able to break in the berry. And 60. Stop. 24.27 seconds. Now that the Pilgrim and the Barry have gone, we have a pretty good idea of where the rest of the car should fall. Next up to the challenge is the Mayan. While it is a jack of all trades, can it be a master of them? Stopwatch ready? 3, 2, 1, go. Quick start there for the Mayan. And 60. And stop. 10.68 seconds. The mine's time is painting a very bad picture for the berry. Next up to the plate is the wallaby. The wallaby is in a unique position as one of the few off-road capable vehicles in the tournament. However, this is not one of the challenges in which this will become an advantage. So stopwatch ready. Three, two, one, go. That's 60. And stop. The Wallaby not doing a stellar job, however, it managed to pull in a 16.77 unofficial. The last car performing in round one is the McLaren, but will it be able to beat the Pilgrim and maintain its spot on top of the leaderboards? Stopwatch ready? Three, two, one, go. Stop. 10.14. It appears that the Pilgrim will be taking the lead on this challenge. Unfortunately for the McLaren, it was not able to overcome the wheel spin it experiences around the high 50 miles an hour, and it lost out to the Pilgrim by a fraction. First up to the line in round two is the SLFA. The SLFA has a lot to prove in this competition. Over the course of the last season, it has been outshined by car after car, so this tournament is the last chance the SLFA has at a lasting legacy. Three, two, one, go. Sixty. Stop. Nine point four one seconds. The SLFA has set a high bar for the other cars to reach. Let's see if anybody else can do it. Next up in the zero to sixty stop test is the Common Turismo. There are a lot of eyes on the Common Turismo this tournament, most of them asking the question, will it actually win anything? It appears we have the referee coming out to say something to the Common Turismo. It appears that the referee is offering the Common Turismo a point in exchange for forfeiting the round since it's not capable of actually reaching 60 miles an hour. I'm hearing now that the Common Turismo has declined that offer and does intend to compete regardless. Stopwatch ready. Three, 
two, one, go. Classic start. The Common Turismo has now just passed the SLFA at the 30 second mark. The Common Turismo shows no intention of stopping attempting this challenge, so we're going to move on to the next car, and we'll come back to it later. Next up to the line is the Diplomat. A good showing here could be the factor in causing a lot of police departments to retire their old fleets and switch to new Diplomats. Three, two, one, go. Off to a slow start. And 60. Stop. A very close performance to the SLFA. The Diplomat's time came in at unofficially 10.27 seconds. Further down the runway, the Common Turismo continues to attempt to reach 60 miles an hour. The Ember has been a favorite of the street racing scenes for years, but now it is facing its toughest opponents yet. Will it be able to outperform the SLFA and the Diplomat? Let's find out. Three, two, one, go. Good launch. And 60. Not a bad time from the Ember, but unfortunately it was not good enough to stay competitive with the SLFA and the Diplomat, coming in at unofficially a 13.42 seconds. Checking up again into Common Turismo, it is about to reach the end of the runway. It appears its dreams of 60 miles an hour are going to come to an end very soon. Last to compete in the 0-60 stop test is the Fettuccini. We've heard from the Fettuccini recently saying he is very desperate to perform well in this championship. The Fettuccini wants to make it clear that he considers himself still in the running. Let's find out if there's any weight to that claim. Stopwatch ready. 3, 2, 1, go. Suffering from turgle, turbo lag as always. Sixty. Unfortunately for the Fettuccini, a 0 to 60 test is not its strong suit. The unofficial time for the Fettuccini is a 14.41, making it the slowest time to complete in Group 2. Approaching the 7 minute mark, it appears that the Common Turismo is still trying to achieve 60 miles per hour even after the runway has ended. We'll send someone out to get him. And that concludes the first event of the Autopolitan 1. The Pilgrim will achieve 10 points from this event, the SLFA will receive 9, the McLaren 8, and so on. The Common Turismo has received a did not finish and will receive 0 points for this event. Event number 2 is a time trial on the 12.4 mile route up to the top of Pikes Peak. Cars will be scored based on their time to complete this event. Each car will be allowed up to 3 resets with each reset adding 10 seconds onto their final time. If a car can complete this event without using any resets, then 30 seconds will be removed from its final time. This event will test each car's performance to the max, as well as its handling, and most importantly, its longevity. Without further ado, let's go see our first contender. The first one that will be attempting this course today is the SLFA. The SLFA has got a lot of eyes on it right now from the competition all wondering what would make a good benchmark time. So without further ado, stopwatch ready, and three, two, one, go. It's gonna be a long, difficult journey for the SLFA. It's, uh, it's a slippery little car. All right, uber focus mode. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's not screw this up royally. This thing is just flopping everywhere. It's like a wet fish, but it's not. Instead, it has four wheels, and they called it a car. And I guess by they, I mean I, I, I made this thing. I'm the guilty party here. This thing is weirdly capable of wheel spin at high speeds. Like, accelerating it at 80 right now, it starts to spin out and lose the rear end, and oh, this was ambitious. Ugh. No resets. <laughs> Oh, we're getting a hard pull to the left now after that last accident. Hopefully that's not going to be irritating me for the next however long this takes. I can guarantee it will be. This feels like a decently quick time. Definitely a lot of time lost to wheel spin and sliding. But when we're actually in control and all other things considered, this feels decently quick. 
I don't I haven't mentioned it in a while, but we're still like pulling hard left every time. Like I just to demonstrate, if I take my hand off the steering, yeah, we just do that. That little pull to the left there. It's it's getting kind of rough. Whew. Points for style, maybe? <laughs> like it's pulling left, but I don't feel like it's just an alignment thing. I feel like it's like just genuinely some Oh So there's a reset right there. On the bright side, the uh the wheel is fixed now, so that's a bonus. The key with this car is to not not try and push it too hard. And also not to push it in any places of uncertainty. Meaning if I'm not super sure exactly where this corner is per se, I need to be careful on the throttle because it's not it's not gonna respond quickly. God, it handles awful. I do think this is the worst handling car yet. Like, just being, just being honest. That was atrocious. Like, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm certain that I am not the best person to be going for the fastest lap. Like, I'm, I'm sure that there's people out there that could, like, whip through these tracks way faster than I could. But, at the very least, at least every single one of these cars is being tested with equal incompetence. It prefers just, just, just feathered acceleration and feathered turning and, oh god. Can we still move? Because I don't want to have to reset. Yep, that's fine. Alright, let's go. I'm just gonna save 10 seconds there, probably the expense of like a hundred more with the damage that we've done. In a weird way, to be honest, I think it's handling better. We've just lost some top speed. I take back everything I've said. This is not handling better at all. I don't even think that front wheel's turning. We're pulling hard left, but... Oh yeah, it's pulling us right up the side of the road. I think that kind of helped us slow down for this corner, though. Oh my god. Yep, that's that's not recoverable. We're limited to three resets per event. So, by driving through the damage earlier, you know, we still got an extra one left in case I royally screw up and fling off the edge right here. Yeah, I think I preferred driving this with the damaged bumper. <laughs> it just didn't wheel spin as much because it constantly had brakes applied. However, we are almost at the top. There's a little bit more left, but we're almost there. Good fast section right here. Trying to push it as hard as I can without flying off into oblivion. A very fine line between pushing this car too far and asking for death. Brakes fading there, but it doesn't matter. We're almost at the top. Just gotta make it a little bit further. Another tight turn here, but this is gonna be it right around this corner up here. And across the line. The SLFA has managed to complete Pike's Peak in 13 minutes and 32.48 seconds. Will the next car be able to beat that time? Let's find out. Next up for Pike's Peak is the McLaren. The rivalry between the McLaren and the Pilgrim will continue with this challenge. And the question is, will the McLaren set a time the Pilgrim can't match? Let's find out in 3, 2, 1, go. Oh yeah, we're off to a quick start here. Jesus, I forgot how fast this thing is. So the biggest challenge the McLaren is going to have in this event is definitely going to be brake fade. Seeing as this is a long endurance race, brake fade could be a real, real threat to the McLaren and could even spell its demise. We are going to have to play this very safe with the McLaren. Very rarely are we going to be in an opportunity to take advantage of its high speed. So we're gonna need to stop really early, take all of these corners very careful. Remember, we only have three restarts per car, and I, I get a, I get the feeling that the McLaren is going to need those, all three of them. This is definitely the most difficult challenge the McLaren has faced yet. Oh, oh, that was not a good one. That's going to have to be the first reset for the McLaren then, used unfortunately early. It's gonna have to be a careful race from here on out, as with only two resets left, there is very little room for error. This is definitely a struggle. Not only is the McLaren facing an uphill battle, literally and figuratively, but it is constantly at a war with its own engineering. These brakes are just not enough to handle the performance that this engine is putting out. Keep in mind, this is by no means a light car. This is a very heavy car. I feel pretty confident about the rate that we have maintained so far. I think that we can afford to kind of take our time and play it a little more conservatively and still have a winning time. Oof, oof, oof. Oh. That's fine. It actually, yeah, it feels fine. 
that that did no actual internal or structural or suspension damage to that. This is that was perfectly fine. The last thing, uh oh. Let's see if we can drive away from this one as well. Seems that's not the driveway. <laughs> One thing that cannot be denied about the McClar is that this is a very rigid vehicle. Oh, a tighter corner than I was expecting. The steering has been affected slightly by the previous incidents. We're pulling a little bit to the right now, and we're having some decent trouble turning. But it's definitely manageable, and definitely not worth using a reset to fix. Because uh, we want to we make sure that we have those available if we need them in the future. At this point, the McLaren's entire front is smashed, it's pulling to the right, it's not turning very well, and all of the brakes are completely faded. It's, it's, this is, this is not a good situation for the McLaren to be in. Oh, brakes do not work. And the McLaren has lost the front right tire, we can live without that. I was joking at first, but it's beginning to seem as though we can. Left turns are a little tricky, but going, uh, right is easier than it's ever been. We're really losing some opportunity here with the speed, so we're going to go ahead and use one of those resets and try and make up the 10 second difference. I think this should pay off. This, this, this is the area that I'm going to really want to go quick. Plus we got new brakes now, all the problems fixed. We should be able to just cruise through this last bit and secure the victory. Unless I break it again. No, don't want to do that. Get back up. Man, this is, this is wild. Let's break really early here. Put some handbrake into it. Make sure we don't fly off the edge. All right, good. We just want to make sure in these final moments that we do not blow our fantastic lead here. I say as I blow our fantastic lead here. Getting a little too aggressive with the acceleration around these parts. The speed is, is the demise of the McLaren. And across the line. The McLaren has completed this event in 12 minutes and 31.08 seconds. We have also received word from Auto Olympic officials that the McLaren and the SLFA will not be penalized for two of their resets for being the first cars to complete the challenge. Next up to attempt Pike's Peak is the Ember. While it's unlikely it will be able to beat the McLaren or maybe even the SLFA, it's gonna need a good time if it wants to stay relevant in this competition. Stopwatch ready? Three, two, one, go. So the biggest concern with the Ember, I believe, is going to be steering. <laughs> the Ember's, I feel like the Ember's gonna have a hard time. What I mean by that is that it's zero to 60 times, nothing stellar. On a handling basis, it's not the most stable. It's fun, but it's not, you know, it's not a reliable track car. And in regards to its speed, it's it's not exactly stellar. Like, it's quick, but it's, it's not a rocket ship, you know? That being said, I mean, it, it's not a bad car. It's just, I'm concerned about its well-roundedness in the rest of the tournament. It, it, it doesn't have all-wheel drive, it doesn't have a wildly high-performance engine, it doesn't have the best handling. It's got good brakes, though, I'll give it that. I will say, though, the Ember is its pretty predictable. Like, considering that it likes to fly out of the corners, like, whenever it can, it's predictable. I guess, <laughs> you know those, pl those toy plastic swords, like, the ones that kind of flop around? It kind of feels like that. That being said, I do think it'll be a decent competitor in the middle field of the competition. Doing pretty decent, no resets yet. Hopefully none will be needed. I feel as though using no resets would be the Ember's best chance at remaining competitive in this event. Make a nice curve around here, don't want to mess that up. Nicely done. Like it's got its problems, it's got a lot of problems, but it's a fun car. Right, the Ember's actually having a really good time. It feels like a good time. I feel It feels like we've had a very efficient time. I'll say that. I don't know if it's... From a speed perspective, I don't think it's anywhere near the SLFA or the McLara. It definitely feels like we've had an efficient trek up. Oh. Oh, we lost a lot of time there. But the 30 seconds that we're going to get at the end for not resetting there, that makes it worth it. Okay, we're coming into the 
latter half of the trek. This is where the Ember's finally going to have a chance to open up and take advantage of the, uh, dare I say, high speeds. We're going to play it safe here. We really want to get that 30 seconds back at the end. We don't want to risk going off the edge here. Got another fast straightaway before we cut back up the side of the mountain for the last little stretch. And we're going to pull back. Oh. Ah, I knew that was coming up, but I did not think it was right there. Regardless, we're okay. We're still going to get the 30 seconds. Let's get back on the road and keep going. All right, coming around the final corner. The final big corner, I should say. And now it's just a, a, a slightly curved shot to the finish. And stop. The Ember has completed the Pikes Peak event in 13 minutes, 46.82 seconds. However, once penalties and reductions are applied at the end of the event, we should see the Ember shoot up past the SLFA. But will it be able to hold second place against such thick competition? Next up for the Pikes Peaks Challenge event is none other than the Common Turismo. We've heard from many officials that we're not actually sure if the Common Turismo can make it up this hill, especially seeing as it's less of a hill and more of a actual mountain. But you know what they say. <laughs> Nothing worth fighting for doesn't involve an uphill battle. Anyway, stopwatch ready in three, two, one, go. Classic start for the Common Turismo. Common Turismo had a flying start and is now rolling at a crisp 14, 14 miles an hour. I anticipated that last mile per hour too early. <laughs> Seems the Common Turismo is already beginning to struggle. What the heck? <laughs> It's vibrating so aggressively. I'll be honest, I knew this was going to happen, but I thought we might get a little further. This isn't even a steep hill. <laughs> it's hardly an incline. <laughs> I'm hearing now that the referee is headed out there to offer the common Turismo yet another opportunity for a handicap. While this conversation is going down, we're going to take the opportunity to observe the Common Turismo's progress thus far. And it's been, it's been three minutes. Seeing that the Common Turismo, having struggled with that first incline, is unlikely to uh, endure the remainder of the course, it appears I'm hearing now that the referee has offered the Common Turismo the opportunity to do the track backwards, giving it a downhill course instead of an uphill course. I'm hearing now that the Common Turismo has accepted the referee's offer, and we will now be heading up to the top of Pikes Peak. The referee is now taking its spot at the end of the course to officially mark the finish line, and we will now head to the top of Pikes Peak, where we will join the Common Turismo on its downhill attempt at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't even make it to the start line! Alright, stopwatch ready in 3, 2, 1, go. A revolutionary start for the Common Turismo, as it did not stall. The crowds are expecting to see some record times for the Common Turismo this time, seeing as it is going to be doing this entirely downhill. Jesus Christ. This is gonna take forever. This is gonna be marginally better than, like, trying to take this car on the Nürburgring. Like, just ever so marginally less painful. Uh, oh, it doesn't have any brakes. It wasn't built for these speeds. I gotta turn down the volume, it's just... <sighs> Why? <laughs> Why did I pick this track? It sounds like an audio error, but it's just the engine. Oh, it doesn't steer or turn or brake. Oh no, if we don't make it back up here, there's it's never happening. <laughs> what the heck? Did the common turismo just drift? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a real drift, but it tried. It's the closest thing it's ever gonna get to a real drift. Fans of the Common Turismo from around the world applaud that one fine maneuver. No, go, go, Common Turismo, go. How many Common Turismos would it take to make it up this hill? Maybe like seven? It would appear that Team Common Turismo was prepared for this after all. It appears the referee has arrived to uh, investigate the situation. The question that is now coming up is whether or not this is legally allowed in the official rules. 
It appears now that the common Trismo is unable to make it up the car lift. Seeing that the common Trismo is all but completely out of the running, the referee has decided to allow this to continue. The referee has now given the go-ahead to Team Common Trismo, and today's festivities will continue. Alright, so... <laughs> This should make things go a little bit quicker. <laughs> there is a loophole that says as long as the car's engine is running for the entire duration of the event, it does not specify that it cannot be uh, assisted by another vehicle. Unfortunately for our ears, that means the common Trismo must stay on at all times. Seeing as we have now reached a continued downhill portion of the track, we will be returning to the common Trismo to finish the event. Alright, we're back on the road again. <laughs> ah. So we are about a quarter of the way through this event, and the common Turismo has already passed the 15 minute mark. Oh, break, 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 drift. Nope, not happening. That was a one time event. I wonder if I could, uh, perchance, maybe. Haha! <laughs> I don't know how this happened, but I'm okay with it. Perfect. For some reason, it's going faster. <laughs> I think we've lost some weight. That must be it. Oh, I see a, a, a another road over there. Uh oh, that's a rock. Oh. Okay, the common trees must immune the rocks. I think we're really gonna want that 30 second bonus for uh, not using any restarts, so we're just gonna keep going here. Oh, uh oh. Oh no. Guess we're gonna be needing to use a restart. Well, that's plus 10 seconds then. I really hope that uh, that doesn't make or break the common trees most winning time. It appears there's another road down there. This could shave a lot of time off of our lap. God, I only wish the brakes worked. Oh no. <laughs> We still have restarts left. This will be worth it in the end. Oh my god. <laughs> no. No tree. Heck yeah, that, that shaved some time. I'm just looking for the next road. <laughs> I think it's down here a bit further now. You can't break the car when there's nothing left to be broken. Oh, maybe. I was wrong. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> it's just sparks coming around in every corner. All right, the common Trismo is past the halfway point at 20 minutes. I swear, it's better as a three-wheeler. I don't understand why, but it ju it just is. Everything about it has improved since we lost that wheel. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm absolutely just amazed that we've only used one reset. <laughs> like, what the heck? Like, if nothing else can be said positively about the common Turismo, it's build quality is off the f charts. I love the concept plates on this thing, like, it's just- it's just conceptually bad. Oh no, I think I've been too aggressive. Nope, we're just gonna reverse through this. <gasps> Slide turn! Perfect. Tail lights all still work, that's kind of impressive, not gonna lie. Do all the turn signals work? Jesus, that thing actually still works somehow. Everything essential is still in working order, that's all that matters. Even if in order to go straight, you have to kind of crab, crab walk down the road. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna do a drift here. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go as, as how I envisioned it. <laughs> Although none of this has gone how I think any of it was envisioned. <laughs> Let's just reverse into this hill a little bit, so we can have a little momentum to work with. There we go. <laughs> The key to owning a common Turismo is just understanding how you can best take advantage of your surrounding areas. That little speed bump that you drive by every day? For a common Turismo, that's just an easier launch. Oh, we're whipping it now. Oh, yeah. No! <laughs> the funny thing is, I have no idea how the common Turismo actually handles, because it's never actually gotten to a speed where you can actually tell. I love how it looks like this, and yet the only thing marked as damage on it is the back right tire. <laughs> and like the panels, but like other than that, like, it's, it's fine. No check engine lights, nothing of that sort. When it comes down to it, this car is just an absolute unit. Okay, I think we're about 75% through now. Thank God. 
Look how bent the front left tire is. Oh my gosh. This is the only car to do this event at the speed limit. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we cut all those corners. I don't know how long this would have taken if we hadn't. This, this might be it. Come on. Come on. You're almost at the top. Thanks to the help of its pit crew, the common Turismo is back on its way. I swear to god if this thing doesn't make it after all this time. Oh my. I'm going to be angry. Oh yes. Oh thank god. Ah, oh. Time. Surprising everyone with completion of the course, the common Turismo comes across the line at a stellar time of only 35 minutes in 5.01 seconds. Next up to attempt Pike's Peak, the proper way I might add is the Wallaby. This, this should be fun. <laughs> in three, two, one, go. Oh yeah, this is a nice change. <laughs> Only the common Turismo can make the Wallaby feel like a high-end sports car. Wow, I'm just, we're just cruising. This feels nice. One thing, it's weird, the Wallaby feels strangely stable right now. I don't know if that's just the actual car being better than I remember, or if it's just bad memories from a previous drive. Oh my god, this feels peaceful. Oh, this is just a nice peaceful drive now. The stress is gone. Oh, I got overambitious. It's whatever, it can, it can correct itself pretty well. The Wallaby's gonna average a good speed though, I can tell that already. Whoa. Oh, but we're gonna catch it, are we? No, but it's a good thing. It's <laughs> the ride height's gonna work well every time we go off into the dirt. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I can actually hear the wind over the engine. It just feels relaxing and peaceful. Alright, 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 alright. This is a decent time for the Wallaby so far. Man, these brakes are really grippy. Like, this thing's got some good set of stoppers on it. That's a scientific term for brakes, by the way. Stoppers. I mean, this thing can pretty much coast through all these corners. It's gripping like crazy. <gasps> I'm calling it right now, Wallaby Best Track Car Season 1. This has been the best car to get up here so far. I don't know if it's going to have the best time, but... Man. This is a nice ride. I'll just throw this out there as well. Because all of the cars during their testing processes had their ESCs on, if they were available, I decided just to leave all the assists on for all the tests. So, yeah, that might not have been the best call, but it's definitely leveling the playing field for the Wallaby. Oh, yes. This is dreamy. This is buttery smooth. Everything about this has felt fantastic. Can we coast through here? This has been the demise of several cars. Oh, yeah, we didn't have to break. I mean, I guess you can attribute some of that to the fact that we're not really in at any breakneck speeds here, but at the same time, it's handling it really nice. I mean, I don't know if I'm just, like, completely tripping when, I, when I'm, when i like, praising this car so much right now, but... Ah. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. It might just be the fact that I just drove the Common Turismo for a half hour. <laughs> but this thing feels pretty good right now. There's just... There's just no frills about it, you know? There's no stress. There's no, oh god, I'm going so fast, I'm going to launch myself off this edge uncontrollably. It's just, it's just chill. Coast around here? Oh no, that, that always gets me. But hell yeah, the brakes on this thing. <laughs> also the speeds. <laughs> I might be overpraising the brakes just because they're doing their job. Even though when the brakes aren't stopping me, it's usually because I'm going in excess of 100 miles an hour. Whereas these brakes are doing a great job, but they never really have to stop the car going more than 50. Is this the, the wide one, or is this the terrifying one that I need to be scared of? This is the wide one. I like the wide one. Don't know if I can make it through here without braking, but I'm going to give it a try. Oof. Oof. Maybe I shouldn't have given it a try. I mean, it didn't go that bad, though, so... Let's prove that the Wallaby is the best thing ever. <laughs> I mean, besides the fact that it's, like, irrefutably not the best thing ever. <sighs> I don't even have to focus all that hard at the Wallaby, to be honest. I'm just kind of relaxed. I'm just enjoying the ride, you know? I'm just taking in the sights, you know? 
<laughs> to be fair, we're only going 55. Like, I should be pretty relaxed. This isn't any more intense than just a joyride up the mountain. Oh yeah, let's hit those 12,000 RPMs. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Alright, I believe that this is the last corner before the top. And we're gonna find the Wallaby's time here. And time. After a nice simple journey up the mountain, the Wallaby has completed the event in 15 minutes and 1.71 seconds. Next up to the challenge is the Mayan. Rumor has it that when this thing hit the markets for the first time, it was actually sold with a tent that would attach onto the back of it. Let's see if its performance in the wilderness is as good as it is in the brochure. Stopwatch ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh yeah, that feels quick now. This thing feels mad quick now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This isn't even that fast of a car, but God. Okay, actually, to be honest, the mine's pretty quick. Oh, it's pretty grounded too, actually. It's that all-wheel drive at work. I love the Mayan. I think I've said this a hundred times, but... Ugh. This is... I, I, I'm trying... I'm staying unbiased, but this is my favorite car. <laughs> as far as the scoring and the grading and everything goes, I am 100% unbiased. But personally, if I was going to walk home with any of the cars displayed here today, I'd have to say it'd probably be the Mayan. <laughs> That is to say, if I was going to keep it for regular use, if I was gonna turn it around and sell it immediately, obviously I'd pick the McLaren. And I'll be honest, you know, this car's grown on me a lot. It was designed to be, you know, not the most attractive looking creature, but I don't hate it. The more, the more I look at it, the more I just start to think it's cute. Plus, this is a fun car to drive. It is a real fun car to drive. It's kind of like the Wallaby in the sense that I'm not really stressed about going off the road. I, I trust the car, you know, which is not something I can really say for a lot of the cars competing in this competition. Oh yeah, okay, let's brake a little bit. This is always a troublesome area. Alright, let's just accelerate through this now. The only real problem the Mayan has is it kind of has a lousy transmission. If this thing had a nicer transmission in it, and maybe some high, a higher RPM limit. Because I think, I think the engine's a little bit stifled on its RPM limit. Given those two things were solved, this would, hands down, I think, be the best car in the competition. As far as what it is versus performance and it's just everything else about it. Now, obviously, it's not the best if you're going for top speed. But if, as far as a daily driver, it, I think it just blows the others out of the water. Ooh, yeah, we're flying through this. Alright, I've learned this is not something I want to take at 90 miles an hour. Getting some brake fade. Ah, oh, even then that was almost too much. But we're okay. We're okay. We're fine. We're just going to keep pushing as hard as we can. Get every last bit of performance that we can out of the Mayan. Right, we don't want to slide across the road here. That always happens. Oh, and it happened again. Right, we're going to cut across here get a tight long straight line we're at 12 minutes and 30 seconds if we can get up there in the next minute we will be highly competitive in the Mayan all right this corner and then this is it all right let's go let's go Mayan let's go and stop now for that time the Mayan made it up to the top of Pike's Peak in 13 minutes and 44 0.88 seconds. Next up to compete in this event is the Diplomat. It is here to prove that it is the best option for an emergency response vehicle if the call is placed from the top of Pike's Peak. Three, two, one, go. Oh, this is gonna be a, an interesting drive up. Oh yeah, this is, this is gonna be exciting. This car has got some real real funky handling going on like it goes vaguely where you tell it to but it also just kind of likes to kind of do its own thing it takes me like the first the first few minutes just to kind of you know get a feel for the car again all these cars drive so drastically different from each other especially these older ones that were toward the beginning of the series it may not show but 
as far as how it feels, there is a major improvement toward the later end of the series. But I mean, I can only uh, take that as an inevitability. That's just gonna happen. Of course, I'm gonna get better as we progress. Six years making YouTube videos, I think I've gotten better as I progressed. <laughs> every, every did a turning, it's just... That's my uh, tire squeal impression, by the way, if you're wondering. You can applaud now. This does not feel as fast as the Mayan did, but I think it's faster. It's kind of weird. So I definitely think this is going to beat the Wallaby. That's a given. I, I, I'm not sure how this is going to fare when compared to the Mayan. I feel like the Mayan is the ideal car for this thing to be pursuing. Oh, not another one of these corners. Oof. Yep, that's fine. No damage to speak of. It's got that trait of a police car down. It's definitely durable. And I think I can't tell. I think we're pulling a little bit left, but I'm not sure. And I don't want to like you know take too much time to look at the wheels because that's just that's just gonna spell death. I don't know. I don't. I think I think it was just uh just perception for a second there. Just perception that was making me think it was pulling. Yeah, I don't think it is. You know, for the longest time, I had no idea that that was the Peter Gunn theme. I think that's what it is. But no, there was like, ah, uh, every time. But no, there was a long time where I just like purely associated that theme song with this PS2 Spy Hunter game. Because <laughs> that, that game was fantastic. I'm looking at, I'm looking through the lenses of nostalgia. I have no idea if it's any decent now. Like, if I were to go back and play it, I'd probably think it was terrible. I think we're gonna need the least coast through this part. I don't know if I feel comfortable flooring it this whole way. Alright, that went okay. Let's try that again right here. Yep, that went fine as well. Oof, that little bump there is just always doom. Hey, we didn't go off to the left this time, though, so that's a bonus. Look at the dent on the side there. <laughs> that's, I didn't even realize that until right now, but that was from that crash way back when. It's really just the fast ones that need resets because I just get over, over ambitious with their performance. Ah, uh, I had an itch on my eye in that last corner, and for some reason I decided that that was the optimal time to remove my hand from my controller and scratch it. Oh yes, oh yes. This. Oh wait, what? Yeah, I, I, we're at the top now, and I, I still don't feel like I have a solid handle on this car. It's flawless. Constantly keeps you guessing, and stop. And its time up the hill was 12 minutes and 50.46 seconds. Next up to take a stab at Pike's Peak is the Pilgrim. Now, I know there's quite a few of you out there rooting for the Pilgrim, so the real question is, Will it be able to maintain its lead over the McLaren? Let's find out. Stopwatch ready? Three, two, one, go. Something tells me this is going to be a wild ride up the mountain. This thing just weighs a ton. I mean, I think, actually, I think the McLaren might weigh more. But this one just, it, it feels its weight. The McLaren feels nimble for its weight. There's just so many freaking trees in this map. Uh, my computer's dying. It hasn't been restarted in like 48 hours. All right, I think I think this is gonna be a good time though. I'm I'm getting better at the at this course, and I'm also getting a bit better at a. I say as I break before a straight. What I was trying to say is I feel like this is gonna be a good time, and I feel like I'm getting better at handling the corners and the overall just curves of the track. So every time I say something like that, it immediately results in just death, so maybe I just shouldn't, shouldn't say that. What car do you take if you have a family reunion at the top of Pike's Peak in 10 minutes? Uh, I'd say the Pilgrim. I'll be honest, I've been I've been driving this this uh, this course for about an hour and a half now. <laughs> and I still have the berry to do later. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. Oh, Oh no. No good for Pilgrim. It's okay though, we still we're still doing better than the McLara. <laughs> that thing would have just been gone. Alright, now the Pilgrim might be able to secure a win here if it can get by without using any resets. 
that's going to be its real advantage against the Maclara. And it has an advantage there just because of its giant behemoth-like vehicle nature. That was profound, but you, you know the point I mean. This thing's a brick. Even if it does slide off the side of the mountain, it doesn't necessarily need to reset. It could just drive away. Really, the only weakness this car has is its probable price tag. I can't imagine this thing hitting the market for anything less than a hundred grand. Oh, well, not good. Power slide. Nope, that wasn't even a power slide. That was just a crude handbrake. Okay. Yeah, let's just pretend that didn't happen. It's gonna be real suspicious if... Uh-oh. Oh. Anyway, it's gonna be real sketchy if all of the cars I do at the end don't need to use any resets and like the first three did. <laughs> I feel like even if I did the McLaren and the SLFA at the very end, I would still be like needing resets. Like the Pilgrim, it feels heavy, but it's it's by no means unpredictable. It just kind of does, does its own thing. It just kind of goes, which is I guess a good compliment for 700 horsepower. Bump, bump, bottom, bump, bump, da, da, bump, 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 uh oh. oh. Wait, no, we can take this part fast, that's right. <laughs> like I said, I know the track now. I think we can take this at some decent speed, but I don't want to push it. The last thing I want is to have to use a reset now. This close to the end. No, every time, every time. It's okay, all these cars just ride it up and keep going. <laughs> Eight cars in, my mind is just starting to fade. Mm, I, uh, wait. <laughs> No, it's this corner. No, it's, ah, uh, it's the next corner. I'm learning, he said, entirely aware that he was not, in fact, learning. Oof. And stop. Oh, oh, oh. And so the Pilgrim becomes yet another car to reach the top of Bikes Peak without needing to reset. However, will that accomplishment be enough to secure it the win in this event? The Pilgrim completed the Pikes Peak event in 12 minutes and 31.72 seconds. Next up to try and claim the title is the Fettuccini. Now the Fettuccini, it feels a bit a little bit left out, you know? It's been overshined by a minivan and a modern sports car, so it, it's feeling like it's got a lot to prove here. Question is, will the Fettuccini be able to prove that it is still relevant? That's sad. Three, two. One, go. Off to a stunning start as always. Unfortunately, I don't think that the Fettuccini is well suited for this this event, seeing as that there's a lot of turns and not a whole lot of straights, and it doesn't handle all that well. I feel like it's gonna have a lot of trouble getting that acceleration up every time we go through a corner. However, as long as, oof, as long as you can keep it above 60. I don't know, that's gonna be the game with this car, I guess. Got those thick tires in the back though, so it's shouldn't lose the back end a whole lot. Alright, this is the Fettuccini strong suits. Straight away with slight sweeping corners. It actually is doing a pretty good job so far though. It might have a chance. Especially if it can catch in oh it, I might have just blown that right here. Nope, we're good. Cause this feels like a nice and quick time. It's things like this, though, that are going to really haunt the Fettuccini. Trying to get going from a low speed up a hill. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oof. Oh, man, I didn't even see that corner coming up. That was almost really bad. Oof. Oh, and that's not good for the Fettuccini. Oh, that wheel. Yeah, there's no way it's going to be pushing through this. We're going to have to sacrifice that 10 seconds and get back on the road. Despite that unfortunate occurrence, the Fettuccini is actually making phenomenal time. At the halfway point here, we are at just over 5 minutes and 30 seconds, meaning it is not far behind the Pilgrim. I think this car has an easy chance at getting 3rd or 4th place. The question is though, will it be able to make the difference and get into one of those top two spots? Not like this it won't. Alright, I'm noticing now I think we're pulling a little bit to the right. Nothing unmanageable though. We're gonna have to press on regardless. It's not affecting our speed, it does not seem to, so we definitely can't afford to spend 10 seconds to fix a alignment problem. 
At this point, it's very unlikely that Fettuccine will be able to upset the Pilgrim. However, the Maclara is still uncertain whether or not it will actually get the top spot. We're going to have to pull it in a little bit here. Rain her back just a little bit. But we can push through. Oh, that was, that was a risky maneuver there, but seems to have paid off. All right, final corner. Coming into the last slight bend to the finish line. Oh no! Oh no, Rafetchini! And stop. Man, that actually could be extremely influential. That, that could have made the difference right there. So, before penalties, what was the Fettuccini's time? Well, it will be receiving a 10 second penalty for its one reset. However, that is only going on to a time of 12 minutes and 34.83 seconds. Last to face the Pike's Peak Challenge is the berry. The cute little berry that has absolutely no idea what lies ahead of it. Let's see if it can even make it up the hill. I know it had some trouble in San Francisco. Anyway, stopwatch ready in three, two, one, go. Oh boy, this is going to be a slow, slow 25 to 30 minutes. At least it made it up the first slight incline, which is something that cannot be said for the Gama Turismo. Let's see, if I tuck in tight here, do I even need to brake? No, I feel like I'm going to need to right here, though, but I'm going to try not to. I'm just going to lift. Yep, we're fine. <laughs> There's not even a need for brakes. I can just release the gas and just use the wee turns to actually slow me down enough. If everyone had one of these, driver's ed would be more like, There's no need to brake. Just whenever you see the corner, make sure to release the gas and then just start turning and you'll be fine. I just don't want to, you know, be going up these hills, have it slowly crawling down to zero miles an hour, and have to wait for the- oh, we have to break here. And have to wait for the team's pit crew to arrive to tow it up the rest of the way. Man. This is slow. No, don't decelerate, please. There's nothing worse in this car than having to break for a corner. It's just kind of like a f you from the world. Dun 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 It's a corner! And we have no need to break. Because it's the berry. <laughs> I was actually kind of wondering if anybody got the reference for this car's name. So I kind of named it the, the berry. I almost named it the blueberry. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys watched Psych. But uh, I, it was kind of like an homage to their car. Or to Gus's car in Psych. Because it uh, wasn't consistently a thing. But there was multiple occasions where they would just refer to it as the blueberry. And I just thought that was funny. So I decided that the berry was going to uh, kind of be that. Although I think the berry was a... What was it? Was it a... It wasn't a Yaris, I don't think. It was something like that. It was a Matrix. I can't remember for the life of me now. It, all I know it was, was like a, one of these subcompact underpowered cars. I don't think it was quite a K car, but I mean, legally neither is this, unfortunately. I barely lifted, didn't even break, and I made it on the corner going 27. Wow. You know, I would like to just throw out there that if we were driving the Fettuccini again right now, we would have just finished. Alright, yep, she just hit 60. New world record for speed achieved in a berry. Oh, yeah, definitely over-anticipated that. How's the berry's front doing? Uh, she's a little, she's a little bit bumped. But other than that, she looks relatively the same. Oh, it's pulling right. It's pulling right. No, where it's just turning left. That's also something that could be happening. It tries to shift up, and then it just can't keep up with what's demanded of it. And then when it falls down to like 6,000 RPM, it just shifts itself back up and gets an extra three miles an hour back. And then once it loses it, it slowly drifts back down and then once it gets to 6,000 RPM it builds itself back up and the cycle continues alright come on come on and stop 
thank God. The Barry has completed this event with a 19 minute 13.45. After reviewing the rules, the Autopolitan officials have decided that 30 seconds is too much to add or remove from a single lap time. Therefore, they have settled on a 10 second maximum to be added or penalized to each time. With time added and removed, this is the final score. Event 3 is a free fall off the top of Pike's Peak. Points will be based on the amount of functional parts remaining on the car after the fall. The cars will lose one point for every tire that comes off the car. If the car is still capable of movement under its own power, it will receive 6 points, with a maximum of 10 points for a car with all 4 tires and still running under its own power. If a car loses all 4 tires, it will receive 0 points in this event. First up to this event is the Diplomats, so no cars have really ever experienced anything quite like what they're about to face. Guess we'll see how it goes in 3, 2, 1, go. Oh yeah, this is, this is gonna be bad. These cars all have quite a long way to travel. Remember, the goal is to keep as many wheels on as possible. We got three wheels left. The question is, will it, how many wheels we'll have left, though? Oh. Oh, we just lost the engine. That is a lot of points right there. That is six points. However, it does seem that it will be coming to a stop with three remaining wheels. So that is three points for the Diplomat. Next up to bat is the Wallaby. So I, this car has done surprisingly solid in all of its events so far. So, I mean, considering what it is. So I would not be surprised if it surprises everyone. That being said, it does have such a high ride height that those wheels are extra protruded for it to catch on something. All right, three, two, one, go. Oh, this might not be a good launch. Actually, this is going really smoothly. The last thing that you want to do going down here is to roll. Oh, we just lost two wheels. That's okay, the Wallaby is four-wheel drive, meaning it only needs those back two wheels. Actually, any one wheel, and it still has a chance at those six points. All right, it looks like the Wallaby is going to come to a stop with two wheels remaining. It only has to show some form of movement. It does not have to be controlled. Can it move? Oh, what a shame for the Wallaby. Nope, it appears the Wallaby is unable to move itself and therefore is only going to receive two points in this challenge. Next up is the Pilgrim. So I don't have to say this for you to be able to tell that this car is beefy. It's got nice wheel arches covering the tires. It doesn't have a ridiculously high ride height, meaning it should have a solid chance at retaining most of its wheels. Again, this is also an all-wheel drive car, meaning that it only has to retain one wheel to have the possibility of motion. So, let's see what happens. Three, two, one, go. Oh, this could be bad. The one thing you don't want to do is land on your engine or get into an uncontrolled spiral. We've lost one wheel. But it seems to be slowing its pace down. Nope, it's gaining momentum again. It seems to be slowing down and stopping to roll a bit. Oh, it looks like it's lost another wheel. But it does only need one wheel remaining. Just one. The engine is still going. So that front right wheel is right on the edge of getting just completely shredded off. Oh, that just lost that last that last front wheel. If it loses this last wheel, it's not going to be capable of scoring any points. But it looks like it has landed with that last wheel intact.
All right, the pilgrim has come to a stop. Is it capable of movement? Oh, yes it is. Wow. I was not sure if it was going to be. It's not, it's, it's trying to push a lot with very little grip now, but we did get some movement out of there. It is capable of turning that wheel and is capable of movement. That will be seven points to the Pilgrim. The Ember is up next. So, this is really not likely to be a good event for the Ember. It's not quite as rigid as its competitors, and it's not all-wheel drive. It is rear-wheel drive. So, if it loses both of its back two wheels, it's not capable of getting those last six points. Let's see how it does, though. Three, two, one, go. Starting off in a rough landing, right away this chassis and the suspension just took the entire force of the car's landing. However, it might be able to get through here without catching any major rolls. Let's see, it hasn't really spiraled all that badly. It looks like, oh it's lost a front wheel, but it looks like it's in a pretty stable slide. No, it's catching a roll now. It's best chance is if it can just slowly ease to a stop without any more uncontrolled rolls. Oh, looks like we're going back into a- no! Oh, it was looking so good. This is exactly what you don't want to happen while you're going down this mountain. However, I can still hear the engine is going. It doesn't read damaged. So it still might be capable of movement. At the very minimum, it will be receiving three points. But is it capable of movement? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. The Ember is capable of full movement. It will be leaving this event with nine points. Next up is the Mayan. The Mayan has, I would say, about as solid chances as the Pilgrim did. So the Pilgrim is still our second place with seven points. Let's see if the Mayan can take it all. Three, two, one, go. Oh, yeah, don't want to hit the ref. That's that's not going to go over well in the official standings. Not getting too bad of... Oh, I jinxed it. That's a horrible roll. This is now becoming one of the worst rolls that we have seen. Oh, my God. Just look at the speed at which this thing is moving. Oh, this is not looking good for the Mahan. However, it should be noted, it still has all four tires. If it can control this and get a solid landing, oh, it just lost its front left tire. There's still a chance at matching the Ember, however. But is it capable of movement? When it looks at its rear suspension, it is not optimistic for the Mayan. It's still capable of steering at that front right tire, though, so let, let's find out. Oh my god. Wow. Whoa. Just... Wow. Alright, the Mayan is going to leave this event tying the Ember at 9 points. Alright, next up is the SLFA. The Mayan and the Ember have set a high, high bar. Will the SLFA be able to join them, or perhaps will it be able to beat them? Three, two, one, go. We're not built for these rocks. It had a very rough time getting going. We've already lost the, we've already lost the air in one of the tires. However, it is keeping all of its tires in the air. An excellent strategy, might I add. Oh, it looks, looks like it's lost air and yet another tire. However, it's coming to a controlled slide. Not something we have seen be performed very frequently in this event so far. It 
Is this gonna ruin its strategy? It looks like it might. No, it is regaining control of the situation. Oh, it's lost its front left wheel. And with it, there goes its chance of topping the event boards today. However, it looks like it will be coming to a stop with three wheels remaining. Meaning it may have a chance at tying its two competitors. Is it still capable of movement? Yes, it is. And with that, the SLFA will join the Ember and the Mayan at nine points. All right, we have seen a lot of unexpected successes in this event so far. Will the Maclara be able to join that list? Let's find out. Three, two, one, go. Let's keep in mind here, the Maclara is mainly competing against the Pilgrim at this point. So it really just needs to beat seven points. Or at least make seven points. The worst thing that could happen for Maclara in this event is to score a zero. That would be a huge, huge damage in its overall standings. And give the Pilgrim a major leg up. Maclara has already lost two wheels going down here. At best right now, it can match the Pilgrim. Assuming it's still capable of movement after all this punishment. Ah, oh, it's lost another wheel. With one wheel left, it has got a small chance at coming out on t at coming out well here. All right, it's slowly, slowly but surely kind of come to a stop here with one remaining wheel. But will that wheel be enough to prove that the McLaren is still capable of movement? Let's find out. Coming to a stop. You know what? It's not much, but I think I th I would declare this as movement. The, it's still capable of turning that wheel, which is the most important part. It can stop. It can't go forward. Just don't think that there's enough performance in that one wheel left to move this heavy car. However, it is able to rotate the wheels and move backwards. The Maclara will be leaving this event with seven points. Next up to prove itself as a durable option for motorists is the Barry. The Barry could really use a win in this tournament, so a high score in this event could make or break a bottom tier placement for the Barry. Let's see how it performs in three, two, one, go. And not a speedy launch off the cliff as expected from the Barry. Unfortunately, it seems to have taken a damaging impact early on in the fall. The engine sounds to still be running, but with a hit like that, who knows what other damage it could have done inside. The best thing the Barry can try and do at this point is keep all of its wheels, as it seems highly unlikely that it will be able to maintain movement at this point. Yeah, and, and the engine in the Barry is gone. It, all it can hope for is to hold on to its wheels it has left and hopefully score, oh it's lost a wheel. Hopefully it can aim to score three points with its remaining wheels. If it can come to a stop without losing them in these last few seconds. Can it do it? It has. Unfortunately with the main engine broken, the Barry is incapable of displaying movement and thus will be receiving three points in this event. Oh, the engine's just on the ground. For those of you wondering what the Barry's engine looked like outside of it, that's it right there. Right. Right there. It's cute, isn't it? Next up is the Fettuccine. While its main competitors, the McLaren and the Pilgrim, haven't done as well as some of the other competitors in this event, 
the Fettuccini might be looking at an opportunity to regain some of those desperately needed points and, again, prove that it is the competitor in the high end of this event. Let's see if it can reach that. Three, two, one, go. We should be looking for a decent launch off here if it wants to get a good start. Unfortunately, that turbo just did not kick in in time. Oh, we've begun with a loss of spoiler. So far, nothing appears to be incredibly wrong except for some cosmetic damage. It actually appears to be in perfect form thus far down the mountain. Can it contain this? Can it continue this? Looks like it's not even going to launch itself up with any speed let it get more flips. It is just going to gently roll down with all four wheels. And it has come to a stop. Apparently, apparently the parking brake got engaged at some point. A sneaky but effective tactic from the Fettuccini. And it is fully capable of motion. Wow. As no rules have officially been broken, the Fettuccini will be leaving this event with 10 points. Last and most definitely least up to compete is the Common Turismo. It has been spending the early parts of this challenge where the other cars were competing, making its way back up the hill so that it could compete in this event. Will the long and slow drive up the mountain have been worth it? Let's find out. In three, two, one, go. So first things first, we're going to find out if the common trees is most capable of making it through this rocky terrain. And that's going to be a test all on its own for this guy. Actually doing a pr pretty decent job here. Getting nice and close to the ref. And away it goes. Oh, immediately a very rough start for the Common Turismo. Oh, both front wheels immediately sheared off. Can it can... Oh, all four wheels gone. Ah, <laughs> uh, seems that the Common Turismo has really wasted its time getting back up the mountain to compete in this event. Just gonna go ahead and... I'm gonna try and turn off the engine. It doesn't seem to be responding anymore. Common Trees Mill will be leaving this event with zero points. And that concludes event three. The Fettuccini has taken 10 points. The Ember, Mayan, and SLFA, nine. The Fettuccini definitely needed these points to stay ahead and stay with the pack of the Pilgrim and the Maclara. The question is, will it be enough in the long run? Event 4 is a ski jumping event. The cars will launch themselves down the ramp before landing on the lower section below. The car that reaches the furthest distance will receive 10 points, with each car behind it receiving one less. If a car can reach the bottom of the ramp with its passenger compartment still intact, it will receive an extra 5 meters onto its overall distance. And without further ado, let's begin this event. So first up for the ski jump is the berry. Yay, it's the berry! So I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead and just start on this shadow because that's an easy line to keep everything going against. All right, so the berry's gonna die, but uh, yeah, let's see where it lands. Oh God, we're gonna reach new levels of speed over rev risk. Yep, this is gonna happen very frequently. I'm, I'm getting the feeling. Yep, there it goes. All right. <laughs> Now it's a bobsled. Oh, that's the fastest anyone's ever gone in a berry. All right, and it looks like we're gonna hit about hit about seventy meters. That's pretty good. Yep, right on the line. Seventy meters for the berry as it tumbles down to its doom. 
All right, next up is the SLFA, and it blends in so uncomfortably well with the snow. Yeah, anyway, let's let's see how the SLFA does. What did the berry get to, like 170? I feel like that's gonna be a pretty common number that we're gonna reach. Actually, no, we're gonna blow way past that, what am I saying? Oh, oh, we're slipping, we're slipping. Oh, we didn't even over rev. Oh, that was, that was rough. That was really rough. Oh God, are we even gonna land in there? All right. <laughs> 130, no, actually, I'm gonna call it 100. I'm gonna call it 126, I think. That, that's that's about where it where it made that hit. And it's off for death. I wonder if it actually works though. Still, <laughs> can't believe this thing still works. All right, Fettuccini, time to make us proud. I feel like this thing's just gonna freaking sail. It's just gonna be like it's gonna be like a bird. It's just gonna gonna fly freely, you know. Let's see how much of a bird it is. It could it could end up being a rock. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out though. Oh, this has been stable. Oh, this is gonna soar. Oh, this is this is gonna freaking soar, Jesus. Uh oh. I didn't account for a landing that's immeasurable. Oh, thank God. Nope. No, not okay. Um. Hmm. Well, for starters, that's not pretty. I don't know uh, ex exactly how to measure this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these as the distance markers, and I'm just gonna pop this into a photo editor and just paste these down and see where this thing's at. And they'll put the score there. Okay, so Pilgrim. See how the Pilgrim goes. We may not get an accurate reading on the distance of this thing in the Maclara, but eh, we can hope. Oh boy, you ever seen a minivan fly because this is about to? Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, this is not a good landing for the, for the Pilgrim. Okay, the Fettuccini is actually way up there compared to this guy. Alright, so we are at... I'm gonna call that 171. Yeah, 171 for the Pilgrim. And now it's just a piece of scrap metal. So next up is the Diplomat. And it's, it's been a little bit surprising. So let's see if it can surprise us again. It would be real interesting if this thing could surpass the Pilgrim in its distance. But the only way to find out is to go down. I'm really hoping this thing doesn't just wildly start to slide down. Oh, it's happening. Oh, over rev risk. Doesn't matter, because we are now at the end. Oh, yeah, I don't think it's going to beat the Pilgrim. <laughs> uh, all right. I ah, That felt a little... A little... I want to say 84. I think it slid a little bit from... Not 84, sorry. Um, 78. And off the Diplomat goes, ready to be... Scrapped. I really don't think this little guy needs any introductions anymore, so let's just go. <laughs> I feel like this this uh this event has been drastically less professional than the others. Uh oh. Oh that sounds awful. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm very glad it the engine just shot itself because I did not want to listen to that anymore. Okay. <laughs> I think the common trees milk deserves another try. All right, just a second till it'll die. There it goes. And poof. <laughs> if I had any sort of like, you know, confidence that it would have a chance at winning this event, I wouldn't give it so many tries. But I know it's going to be dead last. I just want to give it the, you know, the pride of having actually accomplished something. I don't I don't know why I thought a running start would help. It's only gonna add 10 miles an hour. Alright, come on, we just need to clear it. Are we gonna do it? Oh my gosh. You know what? 
I'm gonna give it a 25. <laughs> I know it landed a little a little earlier, but I'm gonna give it a 25. <laughs> After three tries. <laughs> kind of curious though, can we salvage this run and just drive it down there? If you're willing to try three times, uh, the common Turismo has the benefit of being the only car that can make it down here in one piece. So this is the only one that you'd actually survive. <laughs> so I guess there's something to be said for that. I'll give it an extra five points for not killing its driver. All right, and the next car, one that will actually make it, I might add, on the first try, uh, it's the Ember. So, uh, yeah, let's go. This thing gonna over rev too. I'm kind of concerned it will. Oh yeah, it definitely will. Given more time, it definitely will. I think it's gonna survive though. Oh yeah. Okay. Where's it gonna be? All right. That's about right before. Oh wait, that is making contact. All right. Perfect. We can just judge it off this. Uh, I'd say ninety. Uh. 97. Yeah, I think 97 is about where it is. Will it kill its driver though? Oh yeah, no, I, I'm going to assume that the forces that would cause that would have probably snapped the neck or a spine. <laughs> All right, next up is the Wallaby. I'm really not concerned about this thing over revving. <laughs> Watch it over, over rev risk, what the heck? Uh oh, yeah, no, if we over rev in this thing, that's gonna be hilarious did happen and the engine locked up oh my gosh it didn't even just br oh god <laughs> and Chris black hmm I think we should give it another try I just kind of let it coast all right ah say about a hundred and let's see hundred and I'm gonna give it a hundred and two I think it's like right in that area where it could be a hundred and two or a hundred and one but I don't think that that one's gonna make much of a difference so a hundred and two for the wallaby and will the driver survive you know what yeah I'll say the driver survived this and, you know, it'd be unfair to give the common Trismo five points for surviving, for having the driver survive and not giving it to the Wallaby for doing the same thing. So, extra five points. All right, so the McLara, it's either going to show everyone else how it's done or it's going to fail miserably. A little bit of sliding there. Oh, we're already starting to lose control here. This isn't good. As long as we can keep it through this part. Oh, yeah, you know what? I think redemption is definitely, definitely going to happen. As long as we don't fly off the edge. Okay. Wow. It's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> We're going to measure the distance and see how the McLaren did. All right. The last to go on the ski jump is the Mayan. It's been kind of a little bit surprising. I mean, it hasn't performed any major upsets or done anything, you know, super, super impressive thus far, but it's definitely proven itself to be a well-rounded contender. It's finished in the middle, middle high, middle area every single time. Let's see if it uh, is gonna be well-rounded here or if it's gonna shine. It's gonna over rev is what's gonna happen. Nope, it's got enough gears, jeez. But let's see, so it gets about 53, I think, because it landed more out here. I mean, I think the driver cabin area is okay. 
yeah, the driver cabin area looks okay, but I think with the amount of G's that were pulled off there, I don't know if... I don't really expect a good chance of survival, <laughs> so it will not be getting those five points. And that concludes event four, a major, major win for the Fettuccini, really nipping at the heels of the Maclara there. Just needs a good showing in the next event, and it could really have a chance at winning the tournament. The SLFA dropping down in this event, and the Pilgrim also not doing its best. The Maclara definitely showed everyone who is in control on that event. Event 5 is a Soapbox Derby. This will be treated in a similar style to any normal time trial, with the exception that no engines will be on during the event. Before we begin this event, however, the results of the redo of Event 1 have now come in. The points will be redelegated now. And without further ado, let's go see our first competitor. First up for the Soapbox Derby is the SLFA. So, let's see uh, what a good benchmark time is going to be. Three, two, one, go. This is kind of a weird event, to be honest. There's not going to be a single good launch. <laughs> it's making literally no sound whatsoever. Tesla Simulator 2019. Alright, just nice cruising down here. I feel like this event is going to be very indecisive. Like, I don't think many cars are going to perform that drastically different from each other. Okay, that could actually, it's all about the corners, isn't it? <laughs> but no, like I was saying, I don't know how different all of the speeds are going to be here. Let's see, we almost got to 40. If we hit 40 and then I hit a curve because I'm stupid. I was thinking about challenge ideas and, and my, my wonderful brain just decided, hey, let's just remove the one primary thing that makes each one of these cars different. And then let's see how different they are. Yeah, because that makes sense. Better yet, let's get all of the other cars really close together in the standings up until the end and then make this one the decider. Okay, alright, alright, alright. That was not the best corner, but we're going into a much steeper downhill section here, so hopefully we'll get some speed back. A little bit. We're coming up to the finish line here. All right. Can I make it through here full speed? I can. And stop. The SLFA has completed the Soapbox Derby event in 2 minutes and 32.73 seconds. Next up to try and achieve great speed without an engine is the Diplomat. In every event, the Diplomat aims to prove that it will be the best option for police in different situations. I don't really know what circumstance this needs a police car to be able to do well, but uh, it's going to try and prove that it's the best police car for use without an engine. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Off to a stunning start as always. On the bright side though, at least there's no fear of uh, messing up the turbos with the FPS because this, because this map is absolute hell to run. All right, all right, all right. Are we going to get 40? We're definitely going to get 40. The thing is, is that we've really got to nail it through these corners. Because really, these corners are really what all the difference is going to be about. And that was not a good one. That was freaking awful, actually. <laughs> oh, God. I think that last straight is the hardest section, just because there's not a whole lot of incline to build momentum on. And this one, unfortunately, you really do have to break on. Oof, oof, no, that was awful. Oh, no. Come on. You can do it, little diplomat. You can do it. But... Stop. Well, that was a wonderful finish. My computer loved that. The diplomat has finished the Soapbox Derby Challenge in 2 minutes, 36.68 seconds. Next up to take the challenge is the berry. It's the berry. I don't know why, but this thing is just adorable. I don't know. I, <laughs> I just think it's so stupidly cute. So before we get to Barry's time, I uh, just want to say I turned off uh, shadows and reflections because every time we went into one of those corners, it started to kind of splag spike a little bit. I don't think it really affected the time of the last two cars, but just going forward, I want to get rid of that because it just it makes the corners a little tricky. Anyway, three, two, one, go. And the launch was phenomenal. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I've been paying attention to the speed of the other cars at this part of the track, but I feel like the berry is actually going pretty quick. Okay, I'm going to need to brake a little bit. Okay. I feel like that actually was inefficient. I've actually, I think I would have been much better off if I had just braked earlier and then used the, uh, used the incline of the corner to propel myself down this next straight. Okay, so far every car has gotten to 40 on this, this straight, so is the Barry gonna, the Barry's not, oh, Barry got 40. Okay, Barry got 40. Barry got wide. Oh, Barry got slow. This is the only challenge you could possibly win, Barry. Do it. <laughs> All right, okay, so a little bit of break in this corner. Let's see if we can make it a little faster than everyone else's because everyone else went through here real slow. Nope, it was just about the same, but let's see what kind of speed we can get right here. Okay, a little bit of, a little bit of dirt there, but I think it'll be fine. And stop. Oh, that wobble. Barry has completed the Soapbox Derby event in 2 minutes and 41.07 seconds. Next up on the Soapbox Derby event is the Mayan. I'm kind of curious to see how the Mayan's going to perform here. The Mayan is the best handling car in the tournament. I'm optimistic about how it will perform here. I think it'll get through the corners a lot easier. But let's find out. 3, 2, 1, go. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Oh, come on, Mayan. That was a weird little spike in the corner there, but... Oh, and all that didn't feel awful. Let's go, Mayan. Let's go. All right, a little bit of break here. Let's go wide and try and pull it in tight at the end. Well, we did just that, but we exited with 15 miles an hour. Uh, there's definitely a better strategy for that corner. It's weird playing a driving game and not having my fingers on the triggers. Like, I've just removed them, and I'm using them to kind of, you know, grip the, the grip part of the controller, and it just feels weird. It's, it's, it's just, it just feels wrong. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's just get through here. Okay, come on. If we can get through here, that feels like it's the fastest we've gotten through there yet. I think the Mayan actually might have pulled ahead in some time there. All right, Mayan, it's the final stretch. If you're going to win an event, this is going to be it. And... Stop. The Mayan has completed the Soapbox Derby event in 2 minutes and 38.98 seconds. Next up is the Wallaby. Now, I don't know why, but I feel like the Wallaby is going to perform pretty well on this event. It's just a gut feeling. I have no, like, actual reason as to why that would be. I just gotta have a gut feeling that it's gonna do well. Let's find out though. In three, two, one, go. Okay, well it's had the worst start of them all. You know, I know I've said it's weird driving these cars without hearing the engine, but it's really weird driving the Wallaby without a 12,000 RPM screeching in my ear. Still going 23, that's not bad. That was actually, that that was pretty good. We could pull a common turismo and just drive off these hills. All right, are we gonna reach 40? No, we are not gonna reach 40. So it actually got the slowest high speed through there. Come on, Wallaby, get yourself moving. Wallaby, I know you're slow, but this is bad even for you. Come on, my dude. Get going. All right, well, Wallaby's definitely not winning. I can tell you that much. It is not the fastest one down here. I, my gut was very, very wrong. Very wrong. And... Stop. This thing is so rigid. <laughs> the Wallaby has completed the Soapbox Derby event in 2 minutes and 48.02 seconds. So yeah, my gut was... My gut was really wrong. Next up is the Pilgrim. The Pilgrim is one of the cars that has a very, very good chance at taking home the trophy this year. All it needs is a top level performance from this event and it has it in the bag. But, will it be able to secure the victory? Let's find out. Three, two, one, go. All right, 
So, theoretically, the pilgrim weighs a ton. So, that weight should work to its advantage. Theoretically. We are already kind of whipping it down here, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a good shot. <laughs> All right. Not the best, not the worst, but I think we'll make it up. I think we'll be okay. We're definitely going to hit 40, maybe even before this corner. We are very far ahead of its competitors right now. That was not good, though. We really needed to maintain some speed through there, and we did not. So before we added in the points from the redo of Event 1, the Pilgrim only, I think, needed to finish third or better to guarantee a victory. Otherwise, the McLaren would be able to steal the win. So there's a lot of pressure on the Pilgrim right now. This could really be anyone's game. There's a lot of different ways this could go right now. Coming up to the final turn. What the heck? What the heck? That engine just kicked on on its own. I don't know. That was weird. Officials are now looking into what has occurred at the end of that last event, and the referee is coming out now to discuss what has occurred with the Pilgrim. I'm hearing now that the Pilgrim is going to be allowed to keep its time because the referee has decided that since the car never left neutral, it was not breaking any of the Autolympics rules. On a side note, the referee has crashed a few seconds down the road. He may or may not be intoxicated. Autopolitan officials will be looking into that at a later point. Anyway, the Pilgrim has completed the Soapbox Derby event in 2 minutes, 35.02 seconds. Next up is the Fettuccini. The Fettuccini has been working very hard in this season of the Autopolitan. It has been fighting its way from the back. It was once the track time leader and got beat by the McClara and the Pilgrim. And all it really wants to do is prove that it is still a solid piece of competition. One thing currently leaning into Fettuccini's favor is that it does not have to fight against its engineered turbo lag. Coupled with the fact that it is probably the most aerodynamic car in the competition, the Fettuccini might be looking at a good time here. Three, two, one, go. Little bit of a slow start, but let's be honest, who's got a quick one in this event? The question is, how little braking can we get away with? Definitely don't think that we can get away with no braking here. But we still got out at 20. That's a very good corner. We're going to reach 40, it looks like, way before the Pilgrim was able to get to 40. Oh yeah, before we even got to the corner. Fettuccini is flying down this. Alright, a little bit of break. This corner nicely. Leaving at 23. As long as we can maintain this really good time down the hill. The Fettuccini might be looking at a win here. So a little bit of braking. Not too much. We want to get as much speed out of here as we can. That was a good number. And stop. The Fettuccini has blown the competition out of the water thus far with a 2 minute 22.99 second time. Next up is the Ember. The Ember has, I don't want to say the Ember's had a bad season, but it hasn't been the best season either. Facing stiff competition from the Mayan, supercars, and a minivan, it's kind of been hard to impress. But let's see if things change for the Ember in this event. Three, two, one, go. Cricket, 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 cricket. I don't really trust the Ember to handle these corners all that well. So let's take these a little conservatively. Okay, damn. Just went and proved me wrong right there, didn't it? <laughs> Holy shit, this thing's making some damn good time. Fettuccini, watch out. Okay, that was not quite as good as the Fettuccini, but still, 20 miles an hour out there is not bad. All right. This is the easiest of the corners because we can just kind of swoop around it without breaking. 
this middle section here is what really gets you because if you don't have a lot of momentum going into all these parts it's really hard to build it through here all right we need to get a good speed coming out of here 19 18 17 not what i was looking for but the ember has definitely no need to fear about its competitiveness in this event it is had a very good time so far all right and stop the ember has completed the soapbox derby event in two minutes and 29.71 seconds not bad at all Next up is a car that desperately needs a win here to win the Auto Olympics. A good showing here could make or break a victory for the McLaren. So let's see if it gets what it needs. Three, two, one, go. So the McLaren, as we know, weighs a ton. This thing weighs a ton. And it's pretty aerodynamic as well so I'm decently optimistic about the McLaren's performance in this event but no matter how much those things could benefit it in the end it's all gonna be about how much speed it can get through these corners 25 that's that's a good number oh man the McLaren is whipping it through here jeez all right we're gonna have to break a little bit that was might have been a little too much but we left the corner with 23, not bad. If we can get to 30, we will be in a very good position. Nice and sweeping, don't lose too much speed. 27, still good. Back up to 30, okay. Slow a little bit, not too much. 25 leaving there, that was good. Oh, the Fettuccini should probably be scared right now. I, I would be if I was the Fettuccini and stop the McLaren has completed the soapbox derby event with a time of two minutes and 18.86 seconds sorry fettuccine looks like you're not winning this one so it looks like the McLaren will likely be winning the autopolitan but there is still one more contender the final contender for the Soapbox Derby Challenge is the Common Turismo. The Common Turismo has traveled a long way, and it would very much appreciate a single victory. And actually, truth be told, the Common Turismo would very much appreciate not finishing dead last. Three, two, one, go. Is it just me, or did the Common Turismo just have one of the best launches in this event? There's some irony in there. All right, Common Turismo, I believe in you. Everyone believes in you. Just believe in yourself. <laughs> All right, break. Tuck in early. The problem is that it handles awful. So even at 25 miles an hour, it hurts to get around corners. It is a struggle. 36, it might get to 40, which puts it pretty far behind the leaders. So we're going to have to really make up some time here. All right, all right, all right. We have about 40 seconds to finish this before we lose. Uh, so, classic common turismo. Wow, with absolutely no cheating, the common turismo is on the final straight going 40 miles an hour. Wow, who would have expected this change up? Wow, the common turismo has fairly finished the event with 2 minutes and 9.29 seconds. And with the conclusion of that event, we must conclude the Autopolitan 1. In third, the Pilgrim. In second, the Fettuccini. And in first, the McLaren. The McLaren has showed dominance in every event it has partaken in. It has excelled in multiple categories and proven that it is the fastest car with or without an engine. However, it will now be obligated to return to Season 2 to defend its title. But for now, it can take its trophy and relax until the next event. From all of us here at the Autopolitan, we hope you have enjoyed this event, and we hope to see you in the next one. And thank you to everyone who made this possible by watching and enjoying this event. And like always, we'll see you in the next one.